Hello everyone, today I'm here with Nicolette Ap Aprice. Did I say it right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone who goes to Pro Tours and like GPs mm, probably recognizes your face, but maybe, you know, some people don't. So you're, you're a level three judge. Um, it's probably pretty hard right now to be a judge, uh, you know, given the circumstances. Um, but, you know, I have made a bunch of videos and I thought that uh, I should talk to a judge as well, because it's like an important part of the community. And uh, here we are. By the way, did you hear the announcement that they uh, posted today? Do you, do you know, about, know about it? Yeah, I did read that this morning. Yeah, so you're like the first Magic player I got to get to talk to, to talk to you about that. So I just wanted to ask what do you think about that? Because I don't know, it's crazy. It is a little crazy. Uh, the idea of focusing on you know smaller events as events start to open up, that makes sense. Uh, the Pro Tour has always been this, you know, Pro Tour Mythic Championship Players Tour. It's always been this aspirational thing. So um, I hope that there's still going to be a way to bring people together from around the world because some of my best friends I've met, you know, through traveling in Magic. And I'm sure that uh, players that do attended a lot of Players Tours or Pro Tours would say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that I... I'm excited to see where it goes. I don't know how. Um, yeah, I don't know how the uh, aspirational aspects going to work, but hopefully there's a plan for that. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about quitting magic, actually, like we already agreed on this interview. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. But I might just I might <laughs> just stop doing it right afterwards, because I don't know. It's it doesn't the, the future doesn't seem very bright for us. Uh, it's all going to depend on how the, the details end up working themselves out. Um, mm -hmm. If, you know, the, the top Magic players, the players that we're, you, you and I are used to seeing at, at Pro Tours are only just such a small portion of, of Magic players in general, but how many people went to their first Grand Prix because they had a buddy that watched or they had a friend that played and was a, you know, silver pro club member, pro player, something like that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really sure how it's going to work out. So let's talk about you a little bit. Um, before we go to magic, <laughs> before we go to magic, let's uh, talk about what you do a little bit outside of that to get to know you a little bit better. You told me that you like, uh, I, I wrote it down, I think. You like to cook, you like to bake, and uh, you're also a gardener, uh, is that? Yeah. Um, when I had, uh, I recently moved, I moved from Georgia to Portland and then up to Seattle. Um, so I'm in Washington state right now, which means we're just getting a handle on what, um, the gardening is like up here. Mm -hmm. But in, when, in Georgia, we had a huge garden that was probably, um, 17 by 15 feet, uh, which is you know really big um and we would grow tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers oh, and see. eggplants all that stuff and now we just started so i have some tomato plants some pepper plants and mainly herbs i, I don't, uh, I don't so even know stuff what, to what cook it is with. what is herbs? What? what is herbs i don't oh, know oh herbs um <laughs> so basil or oregano parsley, okay. dill. It's like the green seasonings yeah, that I'm go just, on top I'm just not a native speaker, so I didn't know the word. But... Yeah. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Uh, I, when, when you said that you're a gardener, I thought that you were like, you know, with flowers and stuff, but you're actually making food, right? Um... Yeah, we have a couple of, you know, rose bushes, but most of it is is actual food that we're going to, I pick and then cook. I see. So, so, it's, so it's not like a business. It's just like for fun, basically. No. I see. I see. So let, let's talk about let's talk about magic because that's what everyone is here for. Um, <laughs> you're a judge for a long time, but you, you were you ever like a player who played in GPs and stuff, or were you always just like going for the the judge path? I was a player uh, for. I started in 2012 playing. Mm -hmm. So I played for about a year 
and that's you know more competitive um i had i knew how to play before that i played in friends basements or at land parties with com- and um so when i became a judge i it was probably a year and a half or so after i started playing in stores i see so so why why did you decide to 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 be a judge instead of being a player very maybe like maybe not winning as much or you just started hanging out with other judges or what was going on you know i i remember the time that i decided i, I might want to become a judge i was uh playing at the return to ravnica pre-release I, I think know. it was Return to Ravnica. Um, and there was uh, an ability at that time, the mechanic called Cypher. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit of a confusing mechanic. Um, it's like when you hit mechanic. them, it, it triggers and it does something, right? It d- makes a copy of, yeah. of it, yeah. And there was a point where um, I could have like won the pre-release and I ended up drawing a game that I should have won. Mm -hmm. And I talked to the judge that was running the pre-release and as soon as the game was over, you know, what people love to do is as soon as the game's over, they tell you all the ways you could have won the game right then and, you know, two turns ago or three turns ago. So I um, listened and it was this weird like rules interaction thing. And I was like, okay, well, I want to learn more about the rules because I'm I could have won and I didn't because I didn't understand the rules. And nobody was breaking any rules. Like it wasn't a point where the judge needed to step in, but it was some some trigger um or interaction that I could have done more optimally. And so then I started learning the rules to become a better player. Uh and I went with a friend of mine to a SCG, a Star City Games Open in Indianapolis near where I went to Mm -hmm. college. And I saw the judges there and it kind of clicked for me. And so I started uh, attending events and then working towards becoming a judge and became a judge 2013. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who probably watch this video don't even know how you can become a judge. Can you maybe like talk about it a little bit? Like I assume that at the beginning it's like pretty simple and you just like become level one and then it like becomes harder, but I actually have no idea. So if you can talk about it a little bit, that yeah. would be great. So the the judge program has uh, evolved over the years. Um, and for a while, it kind of stays the same and then something will happen and they'll realize that there needs to be some change to keep up with organized play and then there's a a change in how things work so the levels have been have meant different things over time uh right now judge academy is the certifying body for judges uh so you can go to judgeacademy.com you can create an account and there are videos mm. And you can go through the basic kind of core rules of of magic and get a rules advisor certification, which is kind of the, well, I know the rules, but maybe I'm, I haven't learned all the soft skills needed to become a judge. And then there's other modules. And so the modules are a video, some text, a quiz, things like that. And you can go through the process uh, and all of that can be done online. There's like a physical endorsement part where uh, somebody who is already a judge, um, you talk to them and you know, they kind of walk you through and you build a connection with somebody within the community and they can endorse you and say, yes, this is a real person. I think they you know, are, have good intentions. I think that they're good ambassador, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and then they can give you an endorsement and you can take your test. Um, judging right now has a, a fee associated with the certification. Um, this year, the renewal fees were waived because of COVID uh, and nothing has been posted for 2022 around costs. But the L1 process can primarily be done online all the way through, um, which is really nice for, you know, remote areas of the world. 
Mm-hmm. But it was when you were becoming judge, it was different, right? Like the the side, the, the yeah. nurses. So, like, what did you have to do? When I was becoming a judge, um, I studied a bunch of rules. Um, I made flashcards because <laughs> I was in college at the time, and that's how you did things. Um, and then. I went to a judge conference and I was just there kind of learning, but I had, I wasn't sure whether or not I was ready. So I didn't want to like take the test. Um, and I participated in the judge conference and I liked it a lot. And the judges that were there were like, you know what, let's test you, like, let's do it. And so. I hoped that I had enough knowledge and I sat down and it was a, a, you know, a long test and then they graded it and did an interview and I passed. So then I became a level one and then you start working at events um, and you can apply and say, hey, I'm a judge and I want to work this tournament or this series. Is it easy to like start judging tournaments right after you become level one judge or do you like have to judge like... I don't know, small events in your local store and then eventually you get to bigger events. How how does that work out? Uh, so you s- generally start off small. Sometimes there's always exceptions, mm-hmm. uh, but level one is primarily for store level events and regular REL events. So Friday Night Magic, um, small store events, pre-releases. As you learn more skills and learn more event logistics, you'll start attending larger and larger events. Um, And there are a lot of times level ones on competitive events, but generally it's not a thing that we expect level ones to know. So uh, you can't always be sure, like there's definitely going to be L ones who are really good at rules and really good at, at, at policy, but not every L one has been tested on it. I see. So you basically have to become level two to be able to judge like a GP or something like that, right? There are some some level ones that will get accepted, but um, in general, for you to have a, a understanding of competitive REL um, and be working the main event, you usually are a very experienced level one or a level two high or higher. I see. One thing that I'm curious about is that is if there are any judges who actually don't like play the game at all but it just immediately became judges. Does that exist? It does. Um, most of those I feel like have come from store employees. Uh, one of my friends, her name's Sama, she was managing a game store or working in a game store and they were going to start running events and she didn't play magic prior to that. And the boss decided, hey, you need to learn how to how to judge this game. So there's definitely people that um, learn the rules because they needed to help facilitate events. Most of those are tied to stores. I see, I see. So you're currently a level three judge. That's the highest you can be, right? I think it used to be like there were like five levels, but no, there are only three, right? Yeah, um, they there's only three right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, what does it require? Requ- I cannot pronounce that. Require for you to become level three judge? Is it about like not about the rules anymore? But you 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 need to know how to like when something happens, maybe someone is cheating or whatever, how to handle the situation or uh, you know which skills do you need to 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 have to become level three judge? It's a long process. <laughs> um, the so there's nothing in the rules or in policy that an L1 or an L2 doesn't need to know that a level three knows it's, it's a level, it's more expertise, but it's not like how for level one, you don't need to know competitive and for level two, you do. There's nothing like that for level two and level three. Um, the difference. And when I went through the level three process, uh, there is a ton of different sort of categories or pillars that you are essentially graded on and you go through a process with a long checklist working on these um these skills and then you basically do a a take a test do a panel interview and that panel interview feels like a a 
dissertation, like a thesis defense, uh, except for the thesis is you. So um, you are sort of tested on um, leadership, presence, charisma, um, <laughs> teamwork, diplomacy, maturity, your development of other judges, your tournament and operations logistics, your stress and conflict management, um, your investigation skills, your policy and, and penalty philosophy. And it's this long list of things where they put you into an interview process and uh, figure out what you're good at and what you're bad at and figure out whether or not you are ready to, you know, advance. That's interesting. Another thing that I'm curious about, I assume that, are, that there are like more level three or even level two judges than, uh, you know, the certain event actually need. So how do, how, do, how do the people get decided? Like, I assume that there are like, you know, a lot of people want to go, but only maybe hundred can go. Um, how, how, how does that work out? Well, there's about a um, hundred and thirty-five level threes in the world, mm -hmm. so there's not very many. Um, and each large event has its own application process. So, if you're a judge and you wanted to work a um, a magic fest for CFBE, they would put up an application process. You would fill out the application. Um, you could write a cover letter or say what, why you want to work it. And uh, tournament organizers have usually have a person that go over those applications and pick somebody to, um, <laughs> to decide who gets to be on the event or not. Uh, for Grand Prix and, and, and Magic Fests, those end up being the organizer themselves. Uh, for the events that are run by stores, those are usually the store owners and, and so on. I see. So, for example, if Channel, Fi Channel Fireball hosts a GP, they are the ones who decide who comes in. It's not like wizards decide that. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. They'll, they'll decide. They'll hold the application process. Um, they're the ones that contract the judges. Uh, so, uh, they're, they get to decide who they work with. But... One of the reasons why levels exist is to give TOs who might not know every judge a, a understanding of what they can expect from somebody at each level. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So the last thing that I want to ask about is if you have any like funny story or like super interesting scenario that you had to deal with during the events that you judged. Like, do you, rem you, do you remember anything interesting? Oh, it's what even are events? It's been so long. <laughs> uh, there have been a lot of silly events that have come out. Um, I remember there was a player who had to call us over in the middle of a sealed event, a sealed Grand Prix, and they raised their hand and they called judge. And the reason why they called judge was because instead of their deck, their deck box had a slice of pizza just shoved into it and no deck. And, <laughs> and we were like, what happened? And they were just confused. And they were just like, judge, I went to go take out my deck and- There is a pizza. There's pizza here. <laughs> it was pizza shoved into the deck box. Cause you know, deck box size is small. And it turns out that that person had been joking with their friends and decided that they were going to um, drop from the, the Grand Prix because they weren't doing too well. And so their friends thought it would be funny uh, and swapped them out, not thinking that, that they were actually going to uh, sit down and try to play another match. They thought they were done. And so that always sticks out of my memory as just like a very silly thing that's so happened. What was the solution? The person just dropped afterwards or what happened? Uh, I, I think that they, I think that they were able to find it. So if somebody is like missing something, if somebody's already been to their table and they're there, they're on time, um, but something's wrong, they lost their deck or so. they generally have 10 minutes to figure it out uh, before they have to 
give up that round and take a match loss. Because we want people to be able to find it if you like left your deck box in you in this other backpack or something, but we can't delay the tournament for so long. So we give them 10 minutes uh, to do whatever they need to do, whether that's buy new sleeves, get a card that they're missing, find their deck, anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that they were able to find it, but I don't remember if it was within the 10 minutes or not. Um, but at that point, they were on the fence about dropping anyways, so it was one of those things where you remember the judge call more than you remember like what happened after. Mm -hmm. All right, that will be all for today. Thanks for your time. Uh, before I wrap it up, maybe you want to tell people where they can find you on the internet if you want, um, like Twitter or something. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I am the the program manager for uh, Magic at Judge Academy. So um, judgeacademy.com is, is the learning platform for judges. We have a Twitter, uh, we have a Facebook page, and uh, I am a prize indeed pretty much everywhere. Uh, so my last name, indeed. And I'm excited for that. So hopefully... <laughs> Uh, if somebody was interested in learning about judging, they can always reach out. Uh, we have a questions inbox, and obviously my, my door is always open to chat with somebody who's interested in maybe becoming a judge. All right. If you guys like the video, please click on the like and subscribe button. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.